one thing to remember is, is that when you are doing authentication, you're going to try and find a domain controller in your site. And when it authenticates you, it's going to check your universal group memberships by talking to a domain controller, preferably in your site. Now, if you don't have a, a global catalog server in your site, it'll do a DNS query to try and find a global catalog server in another site. And we'll talk about what sites are in just a moment. Now, um, if there's one in the site, it'll use it. If there's not one in the site, it has to go across your WAN link or into another network or whatever to try and find it. If it can't find it, you don't get to log on unless you're an administrator. Because I have to find out what universal groups you happen to belong to. Now, this can be a problem if you have a regional office, a branch office, and you don't have a whole lot of bandwidth, and you don't necessarily want to be going through and replicating the global catalog to that site. But if you lose WAN connectivity, nobody can log on. So you have two choices. You can either make sure that you have a global catalog server, or preferably two for fault tolerance, in that site, or you can turn on what is called universal group membership caching. What universal group membership caching does is it says, look, I'm a domain controller, and when you authenticate against my environment, we are going to go through and we are going to remember what universal groups you belong to. We're going to remember that. So anybody that authenticates through this, this domain controller, I will contact the global catalog server and pull down its universal groups, just so that if we lose that WAN link, you can still authenticate. But you have to turn it on, and by default, it is not turned on. So how do we do this? Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the properties of the site. So let me go ahead and show you this. We will go into the default first site name, and inside the default first site name, we're going to go into the NTDS site settings properties. Now, it's not a specific server. It's the properties for the site. And inside the properties for the site, once it pops up, we're going to say enable universal group membership caching, and we can specify another site from where to pull this from. And it'll contact any global catalog server in that site. And, well, let me rephrase that. What it'll do is it'll tell the domain controllers in this site to contact domain controllers from the specified site, and they will contact a global catalog server in whatever specified site that we have and pull down the universal group memberships of whomever is authenticating. And that's an important point. If, let's say I lose my WAN link and I fly down there because I'm the troubleshooter and I take my laptop and I plug it in and I'm not an administrator, I've been delegated sub-administrator per permissions, but I'm not an administrator. So I plug into the network, it goes and queries DNS, it finds a domain controller, the domain controller says, let me check the global catalog, can't find it because the WAN link's down. Uh, <laughs> I've never authenticated on that, that uh, domain controller before. It doesn't cache my universal groups, so I won't be able to log on. Now, if I happen to be a member of the domain admins group, then it will let me in. But if I'm not, I can't authenticate. So universal group membership caching lets you cache universal group memberships of people who are actively authenticating, and you get a target to where it goes. And it's set up site by site. When I turn it on on the site, every domain controller in that site will say, oh, I, I can do universal group membership caching. And it'll do it even if they're contacting global catalog servers in their site. But I can pull it from another site if that's what I want to do. Now, um, here's the gotcha on this. When you're doing universal group membership caching, it is for authentication only, period. If you have a service like Microsoft Exchange that relies upon universal group memberships to find out mail-enabled groups, it won't use universal group membership caching. It talks to the global catalog server itself. So if you have Exchange in there and all of a sudden you lose the WAN link and you don't have a global catalog server in that site, your email kind of stops unless you're emailing to a single individual. If you're emailing to a mail-enabled group, which is universal groups, can't do it. So <laughs> anymore, my recommendation is if you can, put global catalog servers in every site where you may need it. If you have Exchange in there, definitely put one in there if possible. If not, 
then you're going to have to rely upon your WAN links to be able to pull that in.